stay with the breath. If you want to know the breath, you have to be with it all the time, continually. It's like following the, the line of a story. If you want to know who did what, why, you have to stick with it from the beginning to the end. You can know the what. This person did this, and then you skip around and see they did something else, and then skip around and somebody else did something else. But you don't see the connections. And it's the connections that make the story. As a famous writer once said, the queen died, the king died. That's not a story. But if you say the queen died and the king died of grief, that is a story. There's a causal connection. And it's the same in the mind. If you want to understand the mind, you've got to look for the causal connections. After all, when the Buddha described his awakening in very short terms, that's how he described it as a principle of causality. When this is, that is. From the rising of this comes the rising of that. When this isn't, that isn't. From the cessation of this comes the cessation of that. It sounds very impersonal, but it describes what's going on in your mind. Some effects come immediately when the cause arises and go away immediately when the cause goes away. It's like sticking your finger in a fire. You stick it in, you don't have to wait till your next lifetime to get the karmic results. It happens right away. You take it out, there may be some long-term burns, but you're no longer burning it. As for the causal effect over time, you plant a seed today and it's not going to give you the tree you want right away. It's going to take some time. But you want to know these causal connections, otherwise you just hear what the Buddha says. You listen to it, and it may be interesting, it may sound abstract. But when he says that fabrication gives rise to consciousness, consciousness gives rise to name and form, how does that happen? It's happening right now in your mind. Can you see it? We get the mind really still. We focus on the things that happened prior to sensory contact. So we can see how the mind is preparing itself either to suffer or not to suffer from whatever comes up. To see those connections, you've got to be here continually. You see them once and it doesn't make that much of a difference, but if you see it again and again and again over time, it begins to sink in. And you really see how you are causing your own, your own suffering. You can't blame the world outside. The world outside is bad enough, but the real cause of the suffering, how you take the events from the world and bring them into the mind, that's your doing. You've got to see that, because otherwise you keep on doing it. If you don't see the connection between that and the suffering, you're going to keep at it. It's only when you realize that, well, this is suffering. That's when you let go. So try to be with the breath as much as you can, because the breath is where you can see the mind in the present moment. And you can be on this level of events that happen prior to sensory contact. You get to know them really well. It's only when you know them that you can let them go.